Stephen Colbert, Molly Shannon, Nicole Kidman, just help me realize why I love the Wild About You series. I watch, of course, a lot of YouTube stuff. That's how I ended up on YouTube. Um, that does sounded ruder than it was supposed to. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I watch YouTube and I watch this Stephen Colbert show and, you know, like I'll see my little segments of things or whatever and I was watching one with Molly in it and she was talking about the character she used to do when she was a kid and thinking about how I was when I was a kid. Sorry, you guys probably couldn't see me for shit right then. And thinking about how I was when I was a kid and the way my child is shaping up to be because she already is telling me stories. Sorry for the jiggle jiggle, but she's three. So, um, yeah. And then it was something Nicole Kidman said that, um, I mean, could you believe that I was so talking about big little lies? when she said about the characters and really getting into their stories and continuing on with them. I can't stand when a series ends. It drives me nuts. I'm just like, my series better end in the world ending and then you better tell me how and why it ended because I see just talking about this is making me rock back and forth. <laughs> my mind comes up with too many options if you don't tell me how it goes. Mmm. Yeah, wormholes, spider graphs, yeah. starbursts, I just, I, I need to know where the thread ends, otherwise it's just gonna keep going and going and going and going and going. Imagine trying to give you guys the best depiction of what I'm, what it feels like for me sometimes. It would be like a cross between Gamer, the, well actually yeah, a lot of the different parts of Gamer period, so maybe I should go and see Ready Player One. I was feeling kind of intense about it, but I'll get myself over it. But who am I kidding? I'm not going to the theaters. I want to. I mean to. I have reasons to on certain occasions. I keep looking up because there is a fly that at first I thought may have been dead, but is not dead. And he is just sitting there watching me. He moved once, that's how I know that he's alive, and he's just watching me. <laughs> I'm not sure I know how I feel about that. I'm leaning towards the good, because I guess it's kind of flattering. I can even stop a fly in its tracks. <gasps> but, um, yeah, so the way that Vicki Lewis Thompson writes is that she writes from both 
main character's perspective. And I love that. Because when you're reading a love story, most of the time you get it from the girl's perspective. And it's like this whirlwind of this picture that she sees of this guy. And you know, that's great. I read those stories too. That's fabulous. Woo. But I like it when I get the whole story. I get to know what she saw in him and what was really there. Like, was she getting it at face value? Okay, this is starting to sound way more jaded than it should. Let's clean it up a bit. Um, well, to continue with what I was saying there, like, did she get it at face value or did he grow into it? those two are possibilities too but it should be more like it's not just about her part of the journey it's about his too you know I don't like if I'm gonna watch a movie or listen to a oh no songs are I like duets though I love a good duet god I love a good duet um but yeah, if I'm going to read a book or I'm going to like watch a movie or something, I want as much as possible. So I guess that's really where books get away with it so much. Because, you know, you write a book and it's this fucking big. Nobody's going to look at you crazy if it was good. I mean, Hiroshima Co. is like, what, this big? This big? Something like that. War and Peace isn't exactly a tiny piece of literature either, so, yeah, I need as much as you can get by. I want the whole story, and when you're writing it, you have the ability to give me the whole story, which is probably why it's taking me so long to write my story because I have four main characters that's four brains and I don't want to lie and it's really hard to let four brains into your head when you got a lot of shit to deal with especially when part of that shit is you know a full I'm not going to say that because that's discriminative and rude actually but when that shit in my case includes a relationship and one or more children or other dependents of some sort fur babies family a really needy lily I mean, fuck, I got worms. Who are doing great, by the way. Mainly on a tea diet. Because we seem to be doing well there. Lots of flourishing. Lots of happy, happy eating. All of the... Everything's going well. I'm not seeing... Mass... Hmm. Yeah, not picking out bodies every day. So I'm just transferring them from the lower level to the top level. Mainly if they're like really like the adultier ones or like the teenagers, if they get down into the lower level, I'm like, no, this is where the babies are. Get the fuck out, you lazy bastard. Go upstairs. And if I see two of them next to each other, I'll either leave them alone, or if it looks like they might not have been connected, hopefully, then I still put them next to each other. I generally kind of put them all close to each other, just so they're like, especially if it's younger ones, like, it's okay, it's okay, we're okay. Because the older ones should be like, dude, it's fine. She does this. Just take the ride. 
and burrow. She normally puts you next to food, so it's good. Yeah. But, um, hmm. it's hard to let four other brains into your head. That's kind of how it is for me. Like, there were parts of it that I think about and I write, I'm like, oh, that would be funny. And then there are other parts of it where it's kind of a flash and I'm like, yep, that, I don't know where the fuck that came from, but that's, that's there. I didn't, I don't know. All right. Have it. Yeah. So, I think that's how I fell in love with Twilight. I know that's how I hook people with Twilight. How Twilight hooks people. If you're smart and you want somebody to share that Twilight love with you, do what my friend and I did. I did it on sort of unwittingly. I saw it happen to me, but I wasn't entirely sure that it would work happening to my sister. But I did the exact same thing to her that I had done to me. Because almost anybody can watch a Twilight movie because it's a fucking movie, especially if you're a girl that likes vampires or werewolves. You're going to watch the fucking movie. What else? Especially on the later ones. Yeah, you're going to watch the movie. So, to a person who's actually read the books, watching the movie with someone who's only watching the movie or watched the movies, you sit there doing this sort of annoying thing. Make sure it's after they've already watched it. I can't believe I'm doing this like a tutorial. And mention at all of those little moments where they clipped out something, whether it was actually filmed or not, and say, that's not right. They didn't do that. Oh my god, you should know what's happening there. If you only knew. They're like, well, right now, this is going on. So, that makes a little bit more sense. You know, I mean, I'm just saying. That's how I got hooked. Because like I just said, I need to know. <laughs> the only one that's ever truly eluded me. I mean, there are ones where I'm just like, no, nah, I don't just, I just, because they're on things that I just don't give a fuck hard about. Like, and there are ones that it's not that I don't give a shit about it, it's just that I can't. I cannot. I guess it's pretty much, it's just in... I can't say just in like a literary or artistic fashion anything written really because in those instances there is an end there you wrote it you made it don't sit there and when I ask you a question about it not be able to fucking answer it like you know what was beyond that. You should know the entire fucking world. Like, if there was a whole nother world that had to be existing while that world was going on, you know what the fuck was going on around the corner. Yeah. Because when you write something, you create something. You tap into something. It's, if you're going to tell me a story, tell me the whole fucking thing. So, there's that. But, like, with real life stuff, I know that sometimes you can't get the whole story. Like, history. I cannot remember history at all. Uh-uh. I've got
got broad strokes, of course. But deep? Can't nope. Not gonna happen. Can't do it. It's uh uh. No, his numbers are inconstant and they can get so easily moved. So no. But if you're ever having a conversation with me and you start to say something and you stop saying it and I say, what were you going to say? And you say, I don't remember anymore. I will want to hurt you. I'm sure we'll cover that again someday because that is my number one peeve. Dear God, don't start saying something and then not say it. And don't think that you're going to not say it and you're going to, like, outlast me and eventually I'll give up and not make you tell me. No, I will hound you until you either tell me or stab me to death. you're going to tell me something, tell me the whole something. Okay. So she gives me the whole story. And I like that. It's enjoyable. But shh. It's definitely something good about the Twilight series because Midnight Sun was like, oh, it was mental crack for me, man. When I found out that people fucked that up, I was so pissed off. I was just, oh my god. I couldn't even bring myself to read the Brie one and everything, and I was like, plus I kind of don't give a shit about her. No offense, but she wasn't. Like, it could have been Arrow or Sis or Dimitri. And I wouldn't have wanted to read it either. <laughs> I'd want to read James. And the only reason you would want to read James is because you would want to know what she was thinking when she tried to hurt people. She says pain, but what is she thinking? What is it that puts that into action? <sighs> I skipped finishing the thing about Gamer, but it's okay. You know, get the point. So, I guess that's all really my way of saying a couple of things. Number one, if you like getting the whole story and really getting to know a couple from both sides, then Vicki Lewis Thompson and, dare I say it, Stephanie Meyer, are authors you might want to actually think about. Ah, see? Now he moved. Oh my god! He's seriously been sitting there this whole time and still, until I, like, got to the part where I was about to finish. I guess he was like, oh, well, the show's over. Bye. That is so crazy. <laughs> okay, I just, uh, what was I saying? Authors you should check out. 
And if you have a mental hard-on, and yes, I do mean that when I say that, I mean that mental hard-on for wolves like I do, definitely check out the Wild About You series. And, oh my god, is it a shameless plug for one of her own videos? Because I sure talked about one of them. Here's an eye thingy about it. Click it. Go ahead. You know how it is. Quite. I'm sorry about that. Maybe a little Okay. Um. <laughs> and some of you are thinking, yes, this is why I sit through this shit. And some of you are thinking, oh my god, why do I sit through this shit? And I'll tell you why. It's the same reason for both of you. Because you love me. You know what? I love you too. I do. You know I do. I appreciate the shit out of you guys being here. And I always will. Because I love you. Oh my God, I'm starting to give myself a headache with a heart. My voice is resonating in my head. Oh. It felt like I just made a bubble in the front of my face. Um. You know that thing they say about hindsight in 2020? Mm. This one's making me like 40, 80, y'all. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Mm. But I do love you. I love you. And I will see you tomorrow. Yeah. Same here. I'll be here. Yeah. So, I hope you're having a good morning, a good afternoon, a good evening, a good night. A good day, a good bit of time for all the bits of time, for every bit of time, for any bit of time. So go, share the love and the joy and the awesomeness that I wish for you and me and all of us. Share it. Shine on somebody's day today. Simplest thing. You never know. You know you want to. You know you do. Just the thought of it makes your cheek go up a little bit. Like you're almost about to smile. Kind of like an involuntary tick. It's like. What is with that hippy dippy bullshit at the end of every video? But it's starting to seep into my mind. Yes. Yes, it is. It's okay. I'll go slowly. Just relax all of your muscles and breathe. 